It's Mo. It is the end of December and it is the start of Bookmas week five. So this is the very last Bookmas video, I think. It is also the very last Bookmas vlog that we'll be doing. Now Bookmas, B-X-X-K, is my version of Bookmas or Vlogmas because I don't celebrate Christmas, I celebrate Xmas, and I've already decided that this is also going to be the ultimate Bookmas bookmas of this channel. So next year if we do a bookmas or a vlogmas it's going to be a much more traditional bookmas or vlogmas because I was stricken down with tonsillitis through a good part of December and have been sick in the entire latter half of December and I'm still sick now at the very end of December. I'm not going to do all the videos that I was planning and I am going to be taking breaks. And that all being said it's been a very productive bookmas for me actually. I've read quite a few really good books. I was able to get through the majority of the prompts for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I was able to get through the majority of the prompts for Christie's Missing Readathon. I'll give myself the last week to do any prompts that I haven't done yet. Probably I won't get any more prompts than I already have now. In the very end of Bookmas, I thought we might as well add one more readathon in, and I saw that earlier in December, Books and Lala, Kayla posted her video for the Buzzword Readathon prompts for 2023. So Buzzword Readathon used to be like a, what's the word, like an organized readathon that Kayla used to put on. That was before my time on Booktube. And now she just puts out a different prompt for every month of the year. And the whole idea of Buzzword is that it capitalizes on words that are common in books or buzzy words in books and in the bookish community right now. So she picks a word for each month and sometimes it's an actual word, sometimes it's kind of a grouping of words, and you try to read a book with that word for each month. A lot of people just try to complete the 12 prompts at some point during the year, and that's what Kayla herself does because she doesn't really actively participate in the readathon anymore. So she always does a video where she, or I think she always does, a video where she looks at the list from the previous year and decides if she's read all of the prompts yet. I'll leave that video for her for 2022 listed down below, but I've seen quite a few other people do this as well. So they'll go through the list of 12 words or prompts and see which ones they haven't read yet and then finish up on the reading. I decided that that's what I was going to do for the end of December and for the end of Bookmas. But before we get into the 2022 buzzword prompts, which I have here, let's talk about the 2023 buzzword prompts real quick, which I have here. Marty. I never participated in this readathon actually. I like it and I think it's fun and interesting, but this is going to be the first time that I've ever looked to see if I completed a readathon, which was the one in 2022, or to make a TBR for 2023. And my kind of caveat for that is, although I have made myself a TBR for 2023, I don't make TBRs like that and I definitely don't make year-long TBRs except for my X books that I found about in next year and I'm going to read or want to read the next year so I will be coming out with a 22 books I found out about in 2022 that I want to read in 2023 list but this is really more of a wish list than a TBR because I don't know if I'm actually going to get these books and I don't know how many I'm going to read. You can already see my 20 books that I found out about in 2020 recap. Definitely go check those out for the 2023 Buzzword Readathon. I did make myself a little TBR. I just grabbed a bunch of different things things off my shelf. I'm planning on putting these books back on my shelf like immediately after this video. I'm not planning on reading them for the buzzword, but it's a fun way to look at your TBR shelf, see what you have on there, see if you could make a full TBR out of it. For January, the buzzword is life or death. And these are in quotations, so she wants you to actually use the word life or the word death. And for that book, I picked The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I've had this one on my shelves for a long time. I've read one other Ruth Ware book, which I did not like at all, and I've been meaning to read this. This has been on quite a few different game TBRs, like the Booktube Spin, or summer TBRs, and I haven't gotten it to it yet, so if I were doing the Buzzword Readathon, this would be 
a good one to read in January. The next word for February is verbs, so any action words, and she had in 2022 ing words, which are action words, but because she just picked verbs for this one, you could do past tense, present tense, future tense. And for that book, I picked Palace of the Drowned by Christine Mangan. I've heard good things about her book Tangerine, and this is a historical fiction that seemed interesting to me. I got it in a free little library earlier in 2022. I thought drowned was a kind of a fun verb. In March, the word is secret, and the only book that I had on my TVR was The Secret People by John Wyndham. This is a classic sci-fi by John Wyndham who's best known for Day of the Triffids and I actually did start this one earlier in the year. I got about 33 pages in and I was really intrigued but I was reading a lot of other books at the time so I ended up putting this one aside. It's got an amazing cover. For April the buzzword is emotions so that can be happy, sad, elated, etc etc and for that I picked Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. So my emotion for this book is sorrow. This is a sci-fi dystopian cultish horror book that has commentary on colonialism and women's bodies and bodies in general and gender. I still haven't read anything by River Solomon. They're best known for their work The Deep. I'm really interested to get to this one. I got this proof a couple of years ago in a little free library and it's so beautiful. In May we have Flavors and this was any word that could also be a flavor. So like I can't think of a good example. Pizza is both a food, but it can be a flavor because there's pizza flavored things. Pie isn't a flavor of things. You have to have a flavor of pie. So I picked NP by Banana Yoshimoto and I'm using banana as the flavor here because one of my favorite candies are banana flavored runts. It's the only good fake banana flavor, by the way. I read Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto in 2022 and I didn't love it. I thought it was interesting, but I picked this book up NP around the same time, and I would like to read something else that she has written. In June, the word is other, and one of the things that Lala suggests is to use and other stories, so use a collection of short stories because it has other in it. She said that using a word like mother shouldn't count, so it should be the word other only. I was hoping to find a book that was not and other stories, but I did end up picking Women Hollering Creek and Other Stories by Sandra Cisneros. In 2022, I read The House on Mango Street, which is a Latin American modern classic, and I did enjoy that one, although it felt very young to me, so I thought that this would be a good way to get more of her writing in a small package. The buzzword for July is weather words, and I picked a really obvious one. I picked Weather by Jenny Offal. This is a story told all in very small vignettes, and it does fit as a weather word. The word for July is body parts. I picked Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I've never read any Jacqueline Woodson, but I've heard only good things about this one and have been meaning to read it for a while. Bone, I think, is a good body part word. In September the buzzword is game words, so this could be play, lose, um, peace, game, objects, uh, you know, lots of different words that are game related, but I picked a fairly easy one with This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar, and I've been meaning to read this one forever. I found this one at the Allentown library sale, which is a sale that I love to go to. It's about two warring factions and how two people from those factions come together. Next we have magic words in October, and I picked The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I featured this one in a try a chapter quite a while ago, and I wasn't sure I was going to like it. It is a young adult culty book, but I did read the first chapter and I was intrigued, but then I've never gone back to it. That was over a year ago and I've never gone back to it, so this would be a good one to be forced to read if it were on a TBR for the buzzword readathon. In November we have the word good, so that's the actual 
word good and not something that has good in the word. I picked Alice Walker, You Can't Keep a Good wo Woman Down, and this is another collection of short stories by American modern classic writer Alice Walker. I've only read one Alice Walker book before and really, really enjoyed it. So again, it would be so good to dip my toe into more various styles of her writing with a short story collection. The last word for the 2023 buzzword readathon is sound related words, and I picked Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I've been wanting to read something by Jasmine Ward for a really long time. I have this and Salvage the Bones. Salvage the Bones is about New Orleans, and that is the one that I'm more interested in, but I also know that that has a lot of animal violence in it, so I don't think I'm ready for that. I think all of Jasmine Ward's books, both fiction and nonfiction, are quite heavy. A lot of her books are going to be very sad and have a lot of violence and different difficult subject matter. Having an excuse to read Sing Unburied Sing because it is a music related word would be a good opportunity. So that is my fake TBR for the Buzzword Readathon 2023. I think it would be a fun thing to do, but not something I'm going to do. Out of all those words, life and death, verbs, secret, emotions, flavors, other, weather words, body parts, game words, magic words, good, and sound related words, was there one book that came to mind right away for one of those prompts. What book was that for you? Let us know in the comments below. Now on to the 2022 buzzword readathon, something that I am actually going to do. The 2023 one is a fake TBR that I'm not actually going to read from, but in 2022 I decided to see if I hit all the words and what books I read hit those words. For January 2022, the buzzword was the five W's, so who, what, where, when, and why, and I picked The Cat Who Could Read Backwards, so The Cat Who Could Read Backwards. February was Pronouns, and I picked the book that I read called To Each His Own. March was for Locations, and I picked We Have Always Lived in the Castle. April was Big and Little, and April was the only month that I didn't read a buzzword book for. So I didn't read anything in 2022 that had big or little, large, huge, small, tiny, minute in the title. This is not one of those ones where it has to be the actual word big or little. This is one where it can be a variation of that word or that idea of word grouping. April was the only one I didn't get, so we're going to talk about April more in a minute. May was directions, and I could have used come closer for this one, because that is like closer is a direction, but also it's a direction, like you're directing someone, come closer. Or I could have used seasons of migrations to the north, which north is a direction as well. June is the word all, and I only had one book for this. Only one book that I read had the actual word all in it, and that was All Systems Read. July is book related words, and I could pick a children's Bible, which I read in October, I really loved that one, or I could pick Hell of a Book because it was a book related word. August was items. This is a really broad one, and I picked the sword and the shield. September was light and dark, and I picked murder at the Brightwell, which is a little bit fussing it because Brightwell is one word and it is a location, but I thought bright was a cool light or dark word. October was creatures and animals, and I picked catnap. November was ing words, and I picked nothing to see here. And December was numbers, and I picked seven days in June. So I was able to complete 11 out of the 12 prompts without even trying in 2022. But I did not complete the big or little prompt, and so I've been scouring around for a book on my list that has big or little or some variation of big or little on it. I did find a couple. I found The Long Goodbye by Raymond Chandler. This is a noir book in his detective series, so this could have been a possibility to start reading. I will complete this readathon in this vlog, obviously. And then another one is Out of the Deeps by John Wyndham, so deep is like big or little deep. I thought that kind of worked. It's also Out of the Deeps, so it's more like a place than a large or small word. So I wasn't super thrilled with either of those. The Long Goodbye is in the middle of a series, so I didn't particularly want to read that. And then I realized that I still haven't finished 
the long way to a small angry planet and small definitely works for big little small long also works so it has a big word long and a little word small in it and so I was like well I should probably finish this I got about two-thirds of the way through this way back in August and then I put it down I wasn't really enjoying it I think this could be called cozy sci-fi and I don't think I'm a cozy sci-fi reader I did try to find this book on audio and I did find a couple of audio versions but they were boring me so much that I decided that not only am I not going to read this book for the 2022 buzzword readathon but I am going to officially 100% DNF for all time this book and give it back to a little free library. I know so many people love The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and I wish I was one of those people too but I'm just not. The only other book that I had on my TBR that seemed like it would work was The Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese. This is the book that I picked to complete my 2022 buzzword readathon. This is a a book about a young woman growing up in Jamaica. She is of mixed race descent, Martinique and English, and she is able to pass for white. She's considered white by everyone on the island, but she's also considered a outcast and part of the lower class and treated very poorly by both the white people on the island and the black people on the island. Her mother is the same way, and it doesn't help that our main character has a brother who is mentally disabled. Our main character's father was a white plantation owner. He died early, and her mother has never recovered from his death, their descent into poverty, her son's mental disability, and the ever-increasing hostility from people on the island. This story follows our main character from a little girl as her mother remarries, as tragedy strikes their family, and her mother ends up at an even more mentally unstable state. This book takes place in several parts, and the first part is all about her childhood, and then the second part, which is what I'm currently reading, is about how when she grows up to be a young woman, her mother's second husband's family marries her off to a poor Englishman. She came into quite a bit of money due to her stepfather leaving her a lot of his estate. His son wants to marry her off and keep the money kind of in circulation and in English hands. I really am enjoying it. I really like the way it's written. Jean Rhys was a Jamaican, a white Jamaican woman who had ties to England and later moved to England. So there's a lot of descriptive passages, but it's obvious that the writer is very familiar with this place and these things and this culture, but also almost not giving you as the reader everything, almost supposing that you understand what she's talking about, even though having no reference at all for it, I don't really. But in some ways that almost makes you feel more immersed in the story. I have found it hard to want to pick this book up. While I'm reading it, I'm totally immersed. I'm really interested. I really enjoy the writing style. I'm interested in the characters and their dynamic and what's going to happen to them. There's a lot of intrigue in this. There's a lot of deception and miscommunication and non-communication communication, and I do plan to finish it over the next couple of days in the last few days in December. I only have about 70 pages left to go. Let me know if you've read Wide Sargasso Sea. Let me know if you have read anything else by Jean Rhys.
is the end of Bookmas week five, and it is the end of Bookmas 2022, and it is the end of Bookmas forever. So let's talk about the last few books that I read. I forgot to mention in my Bookmas week four vlog that I had actually finished Sleep No More by P.D. James. This is Six Murderous Tales, Six Short Stories by P.D. James, and I read this to fulfill several of the prompts for Cloak and Dagger Christmas and for Christie's Missing Readathon. You can see all my prompts and what I am qualifying for books that fulfilled those prompts and if I fulfilled those prompts listed in the description box below. If I fulfilled the prompt there's an X next to it and then the book listed afterwards that fulfills that prompt. I really liked this short story collection. I've read one other of P.D. James's short story collections and I think I like that one a little bit more because it did have some stories that involved Adam Dalgleish, her main detective, but I did enjoy a lot of the stories in this one as well. And then I was also able to complete Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese. This is a reimagining, retelling of a time before a very famous classic book and how the events of this book led into that book. I think that you can go into this book without having read that book at all like I have not. Just read this book on its own as a story and enjoy it. And I actually think that that's how I would suggest doing it because I haven't read that classic that this is a reimagining prequel to. And I found that because I knew it was a reimagining prequel and I knew some of the outcome that was going to happen in this book, I didn't find myself wanting to pick this book up as much because I kind of knew the ending. Like I knew what was going to happen in the end, even though I've never read that classic through pop culture osmosis, I just know the story of it to a certain extent. So I would suggest that if you've read that classic and you want to read this reimagining prequel, definitely this was a great, well-written, interesting book and an interesting look at what might have happened. And that's fine. If you read the classic and you want to read it, great. But I would say if you just want to read this book and you have no knowledge of what classic it is referencing, then you can go ahead and read this novel. It's about our young main character growing up, how she deals with life, how she perceives herself and how she sees other people perceiving her. It has to do with her family members and when she's married off and her fortune kind of given away to a young man from England, she initially thinks that this is a good thing and will help solve some of the inner turmoil that she has but also some of the turmoil that she still faces with the townspeople. Unfortunately, it doesn't really go as she's expecting. I liked the idea of the um, English and Jamaican heritage that come into play with this. Jean Reese was born in Jamaica of English descent and so she has definitely a unique perspective on it, but this book was also written much later in her life, so it was written at a time where she could kind of look back at it with some sort of perspective, I think, which is an interesting take on this story and the story of a Jamaican in of English descent. I haven't read a lot of Jamaican work, but this really made me want to read more work by Jamaican authors and especially black Jamaican authors so that I could kind of see the parallels of that. But overall, I did enjoy this book, even though it took me a long time to get through such a tiny little book. This book also reminded me a lot of Ellen Foster, which I read earlier this year, which is about a southern girl who is a white girl growing up in a black area and black neighborhood in the early 1900s in the American South. There were a lot of parallels to these two girls' lives and a lot of parallels to the treatment that they faced over being white in a poor black neighborhood and a lot of parallels of how maybe because of that they were distanced from their own reality and lived very much in their heads. So that was interesting, even though I didn't love Ellen Foster, that was an interesting parallel to see and experience. So that's the end of Bookmas. We were able to celebrate Christmas finally with my dad and hopefully we will get to celebrate with my mom. We are definitely feeling better. I do have a little bit of a cough still, but other than that, we are quite healthy. So we are healthy going into the new year. That is the end of Bookmas. Thank you so much for joining me for all my Bookmas videos and look forward to a lot of new year videos coming up soon. I've already done my Goodreads chat and I will be doing my December wrap up. Move 
moving on to the new year of reading. I will be doing my goals videos and other videos that have to do with the new year. Let me know what emotion you went into the new year with. Leave that in the comments down below. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.